V-Sync, Adaptive V-Sync, G-Sync, Free Sync, and Adaptive Sync. I mean, what were they syncing about? For the last week, I've been seeking about and writing about this topic, and I just can't uh, get a grasp completely on all the information that is out there. I think there's a lot of misinformation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over each one of these syncs briefly, and then I'll let you know what I what I think in terms of AMD's free sync and NVIDIA's new G-Sync technology. V-Sync was introduced about a decade ago to get rid of something simple but annoying that all of us gamers hate, and that is screen tearing, which occurs often in games because your FPS or frames per second is variable while your monitor is updating at a fixed rate based upon your refresh rate. Imagine you're getting 90 FPS on a game while your refresh rate is 60 hertz. This means that while the video card is updating 90 times a second, your monitor is only doing so 60 times per second. This overlapping often creates a tear that is very apparent in many games. V-Sync took and solved this problem by synchronizing your FPS with your monitor's refresh rate and setting a frame rate cap. The problem is that the same solution can cause frame rate stuttering when frame rates fall below the V-Sync frame cap. In 2012, Nvidia came out with something called Adaptive V-Sync to improve upon this technology by unlocking the frame rate when below the V-Sync cap and by locking the frame rate when performance improves. While this eliminated some of the problem, it clearly was not an end-all solution. In October of 2013, Nvidia came up with a great solution for all of these screen tearing problems that made it so that you wouldn't lose FPS that uh, and you wouldn't even have tearing that you could have just a completely smooth gameplay experience. They thought, well, let's put a module in the monitor so that instead of syncing the graphics card with the monitor, we're now syncing the monitor with the graphics card. By that, I simply mean that uh, hey, we have uh, 90 FPS going on here in the graphics card. Now let's refresh the monitor at that same exact rate. And in doing so, we get, got rid of all the tearing involved and highly reduced input lag as well. Almost immediately, NVIDIA made a kit available for the ASUS VG248QE monitor. This is a 24 inch, 144 hertz uh, refresh rate monitor available through ASUS. And you could get that $250 monitor, that $200 kit, and if you wanted to, you could have G-Sync and all of your V-Sync problems would be over. I mean, hallelujah, right? Well, not so fast. It was a pretty expensive solution, right? We were paying $250 for a monitor before. Now we have to pay $450. And not only that, NVIDIA didn't seem very keen on sharing this technology with AMD. So AMD starts scrambling. I mean, I'm not positive that this isn't a project they hadn't been working on for a while. But uh, they go and they look at EDP, those are embedded display ports that they have in laptop that has a technology much like this that's just readily available uh, without having to use a hardware module. And they display it at CES 2014. Now Nvidia at that time came back and said, yeah, this technology is available in laptops, but you know what? It's not really available in uh, monitors and AMD isn't showing apples to apples here. It's not showing you a, something that's real and that's available right now. So AMD goes and approaches VESA, the Video Electronic Standards Association, and they say, hey, you know, why can't we get this uh, involved? Why can't we get this as a standard uh, feature in DisplayPort 1.2a? And Recently, VESA accepted that. This is going to be standard across all VESA display ports. So, you know, if, if your monitor has adaptive sync and then you have uh, a card that can work with that adaptive sync, then you can essentially get this G-Sync type technology in your display. So this is exactly what FreeSync is. It's the collaborative effort between AMD and manufacturers to leverage DisplayPort in collaboration with VESA to uh, support dynamic refresh rates for 1.2a. And you know what? Mission accomplished. AMD did this. Okay, so what does this mean going forward? I saw a title the other day on a page in a forum that said, G-Sync now dead, you know, very dramatic, like people use, like to use titles on the internet. But you know what? Not so fast. I'm a bit of a skeptic when it comes to all this technology, and especially when we have competing manufacturers. And I think AMD has a lot to lose here if it can't show that Adaptive Sync 
does pretty much the same thing that G-Sync does. So what have we seen so far? At Computex 2014, we saw monitors side by side that have adaptive sync. They looked fantastic, but we didn't know what monitor manufacturers made those, uh, those monitors, and we didn't know too much else. We didn't know long-term how it would stack up against this G-Sync module that is a completely separate, more expensive, expensive module in the back of a monitor. Is it really gonna have the same effect long-term? Is it really gonna be the exact same thing? So far, that's what they're telling us. But you know what? There's all types of marketing gimmicks and things out there to make us think one thing and believe another. So I will believe it when I see it and when it's in front of me. And not only that, timetables, six to 12 months, well, that sounds pretty uh, pretty optimistic in terms of getting this uh, technology out to manufacturers. Our monitor manufacturer is going to immediately want to switch to the new DisplayPort 1.2a. Are they going to put it on all monitors? Is this really going to be a cheaper option because you need that kind of monitor and you need the AMD graphics card? So. Uh, in that way, FreeSync isn't exactly free either. And on the NVIDIA front, you do need a graphics card that has to support, uh, that will support G-Sync. But for the most part, the 600 series, last generation series still works. So more than likely, NVIDIA users, all they have to do is buy the newer monitor. So here's my final thoughts on all that. I hope that this adaptive sync thing works out because honestly, I think it's a cheaper route in the long run for both uh, people that are using NVIDIA cards and AMD graphics card. But for right now, I know that I can get a G-Sync option. And in the future, that G-Sync option is gonna get cheaper. So what do I do? Well, it just depends on what your budget is and what's important to you. You know, if you need this technology right now and you're afraid that you're gonna end up having to wait like 18 months to two years for a new monitor or whatever it's going to be. Maybe it really will be in six months. None of us can really know. But uh, the debate definitely isn't over yet. And so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. For now, we've got some pretty fantastic G-Sync monitors that are drawing a lot of attention. The main one that I've been looking at is the ASUS ROG PG278Q, which is a 1440p 144Hz monitor. It's a TN panel not an IPS panel, but it's 8-bit, so it has more color. So it's going to be sharper, clearer, have more color accuracy, but it won't have those viewing angles that the IPS monitors have. Now, this is a pretty fantastic display that I've heard is very sturdy. I haven't actually gotten my hands on one, but if you're in the G-Sync monitor market and you're thinking, hey, I want to upgrade to something, why not go for 1440p 4K? That's going to be kind of tricky in terms of your graphics card, for a while, but you can go 1440p and G-Sync and feel like a completely new gamer. So anyway, uh, that's the ROG PG278Q. Of course, you already have the option to go with the ASUS VG248QE. And here's a look at some other monitors that'll be coming out shortly. Okay, we're done with all the sync talk. Hopefully, it's a little more clear about what each one of these is and what it does and why you need it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. Also, please do me a favor and check out the description where I have links to other articles, including two that I've written, and uh, go and take a poll on whether you think G-Sync is already dead out of the water right now. Do you trust Adaptive Sync to solve all of your screen tearing smoothness and input lag issues? Uh, anyway, Go there, check that out, help me out by doing that. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, new videos coming up. I've been trying to work out a collaborative uh, effort so we can do a tech talk every week. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. If you guys have a question for me, again, comment in the description below or facebook.com slash top10gamer. I try to get to the as many of these as possible. It's not always possible anymore to answer every single question, but we have some great uh, fans and viewers that really help out. Uh, so if you put it in the description below or on Facebook, most likely there will be someone there that can help you out. Anyway, have a great day and we'll see you next time.